Pastor Mike. It's a pleasure to be here with you, all of you, church. Uh, I was here, like uh, Jonah was telling, seven years ago. Also, Josh told me and to to be to be here. In, he told me many things about Minnesota. He, he's my friend many years, and it's a pleasure to return because I really believe God have a big purpose here. You know, He have to do something very very great and also that have connection with us in portugal like john was saying the connection they they have and they were been there in portugal many years helping also us to do the ministry uh, but what i really feel for for this meeting where we are together is something i want to share by the lord so i feel it's time to advance No, I, I don't understand if you understand what I'm saying to you. I'm saying, I feel it's time you to advance. You want me to speak in Portuguese? Okay, I'm going to say again. It's time for you to advance. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting how God used Isaiah to explain that to the people of, of Israel. God always used prophets with the purpose to do to to show what he's going to do in the earth. So he don't do nothing before he show up that to the prophets. That's the, the the paper of a prophet to bring what is in the heart of God. So he used Isaiah in his time to to make uh, to the people understand what is the mind of God. And they to understand how God wants to move in this generation. And uh, I want you to open your Bible, please, in Isaiah 54. I want to share two verses to you. I hope that verses make you understand what God wants to you in your days. Okay? So the Bible says this in Isaiah 54 too. Enlarge the place of your titan. And let them stretch for the curtains of tiny habitations. Spare not. Lengthen tie cords and strengthen tie stakes. This was the word of the Lord for a generation. Lord used Isaiah to explain to the people of Israel how they should uh, approach his, in his generation to the world. They to understand the vision of God is different because they come from a culture of Egypt, a culture where they are like only slaves. Now God was, was trying to show them what they are really in the kingdom of God. And I really believe in this. I believe all the projects, all the alliance God did with people in the earth, was only because one purpose redemption he want to redeem the world so he tried to find people in the world who have the same heart who want to redeem when you want to redeem he make always alliance with that man he did that with Abraham why because Abraham is not creating only his his projects he he don't want only to do his things he want to create the sacrifice. That's the reason. And that's the day where God make alliance with Abraham. In the day he put the sacrifice. It's showing the world is appointing to the redemption of the world. So I believe God wants to do that in all areas of our society. And this is the time for advance of the kingdom. So God wants to see people who are in the business market. And they, they have the vision. To redeem the business. Because everything is in the world. Have only one purpose. Bringing the redemption of God. Redeem the world. That's the future. So in politics. In business. In media. Everything. God wants people. Who enter there. And redeem that. For the kingdom. And that's the reason. is the time for advance. And I see that in many, many, many times. When someone make an alliance with God, uh, is because God show up and show him how he'll gonna redeem something. You can.
can be a Christian, you can be seated in the church, but that not means you are advancing in your future. Because you advance in your future when you are doing what the Lord say you to do. And uh, when you do that, what is happening? You, God, make His alliance with you. Many want to walk with God. Many want to see God do great things. Many want to see the power and the, and the anointing and the favor of God. But they forget one thing. God is interested by this world. God loved this world. That's the reason He gave His Son, not only because of us, but because of the world. He wants to redeem the world. He wants to redeem all the areas of the world. He wants people who have the same vision. And He tried to, to show up and to, sh to change the mentality of the Hebrew people. Telling them, oh, you need to enlarge your tent. You know, for... All the, all the Jewish people, they understand what is a tent because they live in tents when they go out from the Egypt until entering in the Promised Land. That was 40 years. They, they are specialists in tents. So they understand what is a tent. And also they understand the presence of God 40 years appear in a tent. So God is starting to explain them something very important. His, his mentality. You need to enlarge. Why enlarge your tent? Because enlarging the tent means enlarging the presence. Because the tent is the place where visible the people of Hebrew see the glory of God. The Bible na name it as a Shekinah. Is an, a name in Hebrew means the presence, the real presence, the manifest presence. And God now is saying to them, okay, I bring, I'm in the midst of you. I'm in the middle of you only with a purpose. I choose you to be the redeemers of this world. And God wants that enlarge. He wants to enlarge. Many of them, may, maybe they think they are special, but they were only special for one purpose. Them, these people to show up to the other nations. There is only one God. We have the power to redeem the world. And when he say enlarge the tent, is enlarge the presence. If you want to see and to advance in your future, you need to understand one thing. You need to enlarge your tent. You need to enlarge your mentality. You need to understand what God called you to redeem in this world. What you're going to be used to redeem. And when you understand what, is, what you're going to do redeem, you are in immediately with the alliance with God. You can have an alliance with a man or a woman. You can have an alliance with, with uh, structures. With, but alliance with God means enlargement. Means you are given to the world. To change something in the world. You know, and when you go, you can be every sphere of the society. God wants to redeem it. And He wants to use you to do that. Understand one thing. Enlarge the place of your tent. You, God wants to make you. Imagine, all the men who make alliance with God or better. God make alliance with them because we don't see many, many times in the Bible God making alliance with men. We have some few. It's people who is focus only in redemption and redeeming the world. When God will make an alliance with you when you want to redeem something. And he continued to explain that through the prophet. And let them stretch for the curtains of tiny habitations. For the Jewish people, they know what is the tent. You know, in the, in the Bible say, when God gave the vision of the tent, where name is tabernacle of Moses, when the, he gave that to Moses, he make the details of that. He explained even the parts and divisions of the tent inside. So they have one part 
And that part, some people can enter, some priests. But then I have a holy part, and it's divided by a curtain. And that curtain, only people, in this case, only the highest priest can enter inside, the Bible says. Because he is the man who is bringing the redeemed blood. Is bringing what? Is bringing the vision of God. This world is for be redeemed by the man through the alliance with God. In many times we forget God creates curtains. These places where you decide to enter or not. You need to enlarge your mentality to what God wants to make alliance with you, but also you need to have the courage to enter in things you are not prepared. Every time the high priest enters there, he's risking his life. He enters one time per year, so he, he knows, okay, this year I survive. Next year, let's see. <laughs> so he need to maintain what? He need to maintain in the presence and to be completely with the alliance with God. To not die when he entered. And the Bible says when he entered, he put the blood. And that make please to the Lord. So when you risk, when you have the courage to enter in other spheres you don't have yet. You are with the mentality of this higher priest. You don't know what is going to happen. Maybe you can be died when you make new projects, you know? It's a risk. You can be in debt if you make big projects. But that risk means you love God, you know the favor of God, and you want the purpose of God for your life. Even that is a risk for your life. And when you risk, that's the real love. Because you are putting your life in risk. If that's the culture of the kingdom, God risked his son for us. And when you do that, that's what the Lord, what God was trying to explain to the people of Israel. When you do that, you please me. When you have the courage to go from where you are, to go to what God wants you to go, that means risk. And sometimes it's a huge risk. I remember when I when the Lord speak to me about this event. I don't have nothing. I have I, I'm in the middle of COVID. Imagine. I'm in my car going to my I have a, like a business center where I train people in business and also a house of pray and the supernatural school. And I'm coming to that place in the midst of the COVID, and I heard in my spirit, Rodriguez, go and rent a stadium. First thing. I did was inside of my head, my curtain. No, 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 you are joking. I will not go. No one did that yet. Not even John Wesley did that in, in Europe. Why a guy like me? Choose another, my friend. I'm okay. I'm doing a lot of job for you already. I don't need more risks. I'm risking a lot already. <laughs> Also, I need a new building of church and you don't give me yet. <laughs> and then I resist in that. In the next day, he speak again with me. But my curtain, I don't go, want to go to that area. I don't want to risk this. I'm okay. Then suddenly I obey. No, you, we are like that. We are li literally bipolar in our faith. Sometimes we are very... Okay, we want to obey. Sometimes we don't want to obey. Well, come on. Are my more spiritual bipolar like me? <laughs> okay, thank you for more sinners in this room like me. Imagine. And I'm in the midst of this. I'm like, okay, I go. Let me see. Let me risk. Let me put a little of blood there. And see what is behind the curtain. Because let me say one thing, behind the curtain, always when the Lord speak, have something precious for you. 
And then I go, when I enter, when I go to the meeting uh, in the stadium, and the appointment, one of the guys come to me and ask me, what you come for? I told him, I come to rent this stadium for a Christian event. He looked to me, what? You don't know? We have in the status of the, the stadium. Is is forbidden to do events, uh, religious and political inside of the stadium. We only do soccer and other kind of entertainment events, music and other things. I say, okay, but can I enter in the meeting? Yeah, sure, please come. Okay, I enter in the meeting and I enter in a new curtain to see what is happening. I'm seated, one of the other guys looked at me, oh, I know you. Yeah, but I don't know you, okay. But you know when you are in that situation, someone know you, but you don't know where, it, okay. He started to speak with me and I discovered he, I was a teacher in the university in sports. And this guy who is now there speaking to me, he will say, I know you. He, is, he was studying in my uh, school when I was a teacher. And he looked to me, he started to ask me many things after 15 years, he don't see me. And I told him, because I was, when I started to be a believer, I was seven years in, and then I come to the ministry. So he don't see me more. So he asked me, what were all the things that I explained to him? In the end, he, he looked to me and said, okay, what you come for? I told him, what kind of event you want to do? I told him, I came here to make, I want to do a Christian event in this stadium. He looked to me, oh, okay, that will be easy. The other guy inside of the state, inside of the meeting, looked to him, and I discovered this guy who was speaking to me. Who is, who know me, is the director of the stadium. Let me say one thing. Every time you risk, you have gold behind the curtains. God, no, he don't speak to you only to, to shame you. Instead of that, he want to bless you. And you to see he's behind the curtains doing his job. Bringing favor. Bringing blessing. But he want to risk. He want you to risk. Because the risk is that time where you enter and you don't know what is going to happen. That show him your love. You don't know if you're going to die there. Or he's going to be ashamed there. He's not about your reputation. He's not about nothing. He's about his kingdom and the love you have for him. And you have, when you have the courage to go and say, okay, like David, you know, David had that courage to do this, but he was not a priest. It's incredible. God don't kill David because he have a pure heart and he want to do the right thing. You know, let me say, I don't know if this is, if you heard this, what I'm saying to you now, God loves people with ambition. God is ambition for this world. His ambition is redeem this world. And when he saw someone who want the same ambition, who want to say, okay, I want to redeem the business world. I want to redeem the media. I want to redeem the politics. I want to redeem a stadium. I want to read, because everything is created in this world is for his glory, says the Bible. And he's waiting for people who take the position for his glory. And then I, after that, we, we rent, and I experienced something I never experienced. When we risk, we experience failure. God have the gold, you know, like Peter. You remember? Peter was very mad. Oh, Jesus, they are coming. They want my taxes, your taxes, and the disciples' taxes. And Jesus said, okay, Peter, do what you, you do always. Go and fish. Peter is a specialist in, in fishing. All his life is his work, so he gets and he fish. But when he push, come a fish with what? A golden coin in the... I need to find that also. The golden coin. You know, God can do with things you do. Maybe Peter, when he heard that from Jesus, maybe he think, okay, it's normal. Always he's used to change what? Fish for money. Is the way he work. For him, it's okay. Oh, Jesus want me to fish, okay. To pay the taxes. But 
Jesus see the golden coin. Let me say every time you risk, every time you obey to the Lord's voice, you will experience the golden coin. The favor, the grace is behind the curtains. You don't see it. You need to risk. And your risk is your love showing to the Lord. See what he said after. And let them stretch forth the curtains of tiny habitations. Spare not. Say with me, spare not. Why the prophet used these words here? Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Because most of the people, they have afraid to go. But he's creating affirmation. You cannot, you cannot let to build. You need to believe what I'm saying. You don't need to come. You need to advance. You know, most of the people, what they do in their lives, they have risks, they take risks. One thing, who manifest, and this is a testimony, is the risk. All the testimonies you have in your life was because you risk. That's the culture of the kingdom. But risk, make attention. We don't like. I don't know if you like, but I don't like. For me, it was very good if God told me, Oh, Rodriguez, don't worry. I will send $1 million dollars to your account. I want you to go to rent a stadium. Don't worry. Uh, in this, tomorrow, I will bring 40,000 people to you to be and to get the ticket to be in the stadium. I will bring a good team to you tomorrow. Tomorrow, before you go to the to rent the stadium, I will do everything for you. Don't worry. If you God say that to me, I will be very blessed. You know, let me say one thing. God don't say that to me, but he have already that behind the curtains. God will not say that to you, but he have already that behind the curtains to you. He don't want you to spare not, to waste your life, to not risk. Because if you don't risk, if you don't have the courage to risk, and you make excuses for that because you are old, because you are fat, because you are teeny, because you your hair is not so beautiful, because you are you have some, how you say? You know, if you have, <laughs> you know, if you have that kind of things, always you make an excuse to not go. Because it will be difficult and you need to, you know the risk. And the risk sometimes is money and sometimes is reputation. <laughs> I remember one day I was in Israel. And uh, I was in a conference for with Josh. Josh was with me that day. I was in a conference for a house of pray. They made all years they make like a convocation of praise. So I was there also representing Portugal and there is all the other nations with houses of praise. And I'm, I'm the speaker in that day. And my friend, Tom, who is the organizing of that conference, looked to me and said, Rodriguez, you need to go now. So before I speak, was speaking uh, Cindy Jacobs. You know Cindy Jacobs? So she was speaking. She's a sender, no? <laughs> Strong woman, my friend. I was listening to her, whoa. Then I, I am the next. And Tom looked to me, Rodriguez, you need to jump. I told him, okay, can you bring please my translator? Because I speak Portuguese, you know? If you want, I can try to see your gifts and I can speak in Portugal, Portuguese to see how many people have the gift of interpretation here. And I'm there asking him and I told him, Okay, bring my, my translator, me to explain what I'm going to speak. Yeah, okay, okay. So we go to try to find the translator, and I'm seated there, waiting. He came again and say, oh, we, we have a problem, Rodriguez. I told him, a problem? Yeah, your translator have a problem, so he cannot come today. I say, okay, bro, no problem. Put another person to speak. This was like maybe nine years ago. I told them, oh, jump another person to speak. You have Josh, you have so many big guys here, please. And he looked to me and said, no, no, you speak. I, did. I said, I don't speak English, my friend. You want to kill this, these people? 
You are joking with me. You let me say one thing. When I was in the school in Portugal, they teach the English. But my my teacher was so bad. I don't like English because of her. So I I lost all the English. And in that day, I'm in the situation I need to speak in English, but I don't speak English. I only speak normal, but not to speak in there for a public. I looked to him and he said again to me, Rodriguez, you need to jump. I told him, brother, I cannot jump. You are joking. So come to worship and I come to pray. I'm in the midst of the worship waiting, seeing what I'm going to do. Have you situations like this only come to me? I'm there. I don't know what to, I'm going to do. I never grab a, beer, a Bible in English. Imagine. And I'm in that moment. Come one song, two songs. I'm next. I think, Lord, what I'm going to do? I want to run away from you. This gonna, this, I'm going to lost my ministry. This is going to be a shame for your kingdom, not for only for me, for your kingdom also. Because these people, I don't know how many people, but maybe more than 1,000 people were in that meeting. This is going to be a shame, Lord. My wife is here. She, she is going to be mad with me because I make a bad figure of the family. <laughs> And I start to create these things in my mind, speaking to the Lord in the midst of the worship. And at the same time, I take a decision. Okay. If this is going to kill my reputation. If this is the last day I'm going to speak. As a minister. That's not a problem. But. I'm going to do. What you called me to do. If they suffer. is your problem. If I is a shame for me. Okay. I'm available to pass to this shame. I remember the pastor, he called me, I come to the front, <laughs> I grab my Bible, I pick a Bible in the middle of the public people. So I get the Bible in English, I come, I never forget, because the same verse I'm speaking today, I speak that day. The same. So I grab my Bible, I know it's Isaiah 44, I open the Bible, and you know, I start to speak, to try to read, sorry. <laughs> I tried to read in English. It was my first time. I'm reading a Bible in English. And you know, after maybe, this is a very small verse, no? I think I delay maybe three, four minutes. Because I try to, to understand what I'm speaking. I feel the tension. I feel bad, you know? I'm saying, oh my God, what the situation. I start to be nervous, even. Suddenly I heard the Lord speaking to me, close the Bible. You already proved me. You are ready for sacrifice. So I closed the Bible and then I start to speak. Speak, speak. But, you know, I'm speaking, but I don't know what I'm speaking. I'm speaking. I was thinking I'm like that kind of Brazilians arrived to Portugal or arrive to America, or the kind of Portuguese when the immigrants come to America, they are thinking they are speaking in English, but they are speaking only the accent with the normal language they have. Have you seen these kind of people? <laughs> I see many times in Europe, people speaking like that. So I'm thinking I'm doing the same, speaking in Portuguese with the accent in American on English. After 20 minutes, I was thinking, oh, I need to see this because maybe I'm making these people suffering. So I make an altar call after 20 minutes. Who want to receive from this message? Please come to the front. I want to pray for you. So sadly come more than 80% of the crowd. I was, what? At the same time, come uh, in my mind. Okay, they are so mad with you. They want to leave for very fast <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> and <laughs> suddenly when I go to pray for them I'm in the in the in the pulpit like here I'm going down this is a big platform I heard the Holy Spirit say don't, don't do not do nothing 
stay there. And all the people come to front, I start to see people. You know Domino is the same name, the game? When you put one piece, and this is the first time I see in my life people like Domino. No one touched if people fell down. Boom, 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 boom. I was in shock. I was in the pulpit seeing all this because I heard the Holy Spirit saying, you did your job, let me do mine. No. All of them in the floor. After Cindy Jacobs, my friend. This is not a good, it's not easy. All in the floor. In the end, midnight. This, they, they close the lights because this is in a Jewish place. They do the conference. So the guys, they are very strict with the time. They close everything. They close the mic and say, you need to leave. But people don't want to leave. We start at eight. Four hours. People, la, 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 you, la, 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 la. Oh my gosh, we, we don't know what is happening. Suddenly, I push them. You, you need to go. The, 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 we are pushing them to out. Me and my wife and all the crew there. When we come out of the building, I start to see people outside in pyjama. Chinese. I was, what is going to happen here now? Then I realized what happened. After sing, they heard singing Jacobs in the meeting. And they don't know me. So most of the people, they are tired and they go to the hotel to sleep and to rest. So, but some keep in the, in the building. That 1,000 people were there. Because there are more, more and more people. And what happened? When they experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, they start to call the people who are in bed and say, you need to come to experience this because this never happened in our lives. And they, they start to speak in tongues, sing heaven and there. So when I arrived there, these people who come to the, from the hotel running to us to pray for them. And I'm now in the street, praying and baptizing Chinese people all around. I was sick. I was sick. What, what is going to happen? Next day, I wake. I, I come to the hotel with my wife. I look, what happened today? Baby, do you think they understand me? She looked at me. I don't know. I don't understand nothing. But one thing I see was incredible. <laughs> she don't speak English. It was incredible. I never see a thing like that. We never see a thing like that. I thought, okay. In the morning, I called one of my friends who were in the meeting, Vlado, uh, a guy from Slovakia. I told him, brother, do you understand when I, I speak last, last night? He told me, Rodriguez, I never imagined you have a good English. You, 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 I understand you. I was, okay, what happened here? <laughs> that night, I start to sleep. I sleep and I dream in English. One week after, I'm in, Portu I'm in Portugal and I have an invitation to go to participate in a conference in the Netherlands. So I go to attend to sit at London. They have many speakers and I'm there with Ben Him, other, other speakers, Jen Luke, my friends. I'm seated only watching. I'm not the speaker in that conference. In the, in the lunch, I receive a call, a message from Jen Luke. Rodriguez, you are the next. I say, what? Yeah, yeah you are the next. Uh, we have a problem with the speaker and he's, he's sick. You need to go in the next. Can you help us in that? I told, brother, you have a translator? He told me, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I have a translator. Okay. So I accept. I go to the meeting. I'm going to speak. Paul Monroe got my friends there. I'm going to speak. I enter in the pulpit and they have my translator. I start to speak in Portuguese. He looked to me. He don't understand nothing. I looked to him. Please translate, he told me. No, no, you speak English, I speak Dutch. <laughs> you need to speak in English, I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> I was okay again. <laughs> so yes, I start to speak again. You don't imagine what happened. 
from that day on, you understand me? So you have a good gift of interpretation. You know, after that day, I start to speak normal. I, when I hear someone speaking in English, it's the same I speak in Portuguese. Now I speak in three languages, normal. In Spanish, Portuguese, English. I never go to the school. I never go to the school. But, hey, sorry, I was in the school, but I, they, they say I am not good. <laughs> Let me say this, when you have the courage to not sp spare not, and you have the courage to enter in things you are not prepared to do, and that can shame you even. In that day, it can be the last day I speak, but instead of that, God has something behind the curtain. Because I take the risk, it brings me English. Sometimes I, when I go to some places, people start to ask me, Please, Rodriguez, pray for me. I need a new language. <laughs> you, let me say and see. God will give you what need to give with your gift of redemption. He will give what you need to redeem in your area. He will not give you things you don't need. He will give things is your purpose. With the His alliance in redemption. That he will give you. Don't try to get the, the things from the others because the things are inside already of you. But they will be activated when you have the courage to, to maintain in the alliance. Because it's your faith who maintain you there. See what he said again. Spare not, lengthen tie cords and string them, tie stakes. Why you... How you, you use in America the tent? You don't put a stake in the tent? Yeah? Why you do that? When come the wind? No? What the cord does? It help you. It balance the tent. To not broke what? The cord. Because if broke the cord, the tent goes. It's flexible. Why the cord is flexible? Two, because of the pressure. She need to, a little, she need to be the right need flexible to help and to not break the tent. Most of the Christians, they don't understand about flexibility. They want the things in their way. God was trying to change the mentality of Jewish people. Because I, I learned when I go to Israel, they are in the right time, this, 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 this. But sometimes God wants something different. But they learn in that way and they want to do in that way. Let me say, the way of the kingdom sometimes is different from the way I learn. We need to be flexible to understand what the Lord wants to do in our, our time, in this project, in new things we're going to do. We cannot be like blocked in our minds. What, what happened? If you are flexible, when comes the pressure, you will have capacity to deal with the pressure because you only win the pressure with power. Instead of that, you will enter in the pressure. And let me say one thing. The wind will come. You want or you don't want. Every project you put in order and you have an alliance with God, the devil will try to create pressure. And the capacity you have to be flexible, to be in response, waiting, believing, your stake is the stake of, is the Lord's stake. He allowed you to pass through all that pressure because the Bible says he will not make more pressure than he knows you can handle. So when you have that pressure, he's only trying to show you. The devil can try to breathe and try to create situations. But what you have is bigger than that. You can win all the pressure. Being what? Flexible. 
learn with the situation. Let me say one thing. It's two ways God speaks to us. God speaks to us when He uses His word to speak to us, and He speaks through suffering. All the moment, moments of pressure, they are created in our heart pain and suffer. And when you suffer and you are flexible to learn from the suffering, you, learn, you hear the voice of the Lord. Because everything you have pain in your life many times is because of something you don't hear the Lord. And sometimes the suffering comes not to destroy you, but come only with the purpose, you to learn the ways of the Lord. And when you learn the ways of the Lord, you move in the ways of the Lord. I know many people who pay, pass many pain in this life. Christians. I don't know, have anyone here with pain? If you don't have, you are already in heaven, my friend. Because this is a language you will have. I pass many times of pain and suffering. With people? Have you been betrayed? Have you have situations with people? If you don't have, it's a miracle. Because, I don't know, I think sometimes I have like a honey for, for, for the devil. You always use people to create situations with me, I don't create with them. Have you also? Let me say one thing, that means you are in the purpose and he wants to take you off from that. And what will, will maintain you is the flexibility. Learn from the situation. Learn from what is trying to eat you. Because sometimes we don't have choice to, be, to suffer. People make bad things against us. And in that moment is the moment to learn about forgiveness. It's difficult. Bad choices we made. Sometimes some disease comes to people and they learn from the disease. I know many people who learn with cancer. They start to see different their lives. They start to see their lives is important. And they have a time to live. We never think about that. I'm young. I don't think about that. But who is close to the dead, they, believe, they, they think in that. And that is wisdom. Because when you know you have a life and you, your life should be the life God desires for you, that is wisdom. And some people who have suffered, they learn from the suffer moments. Let me say, if you understand this, like the people of, I, of Israel, who understand what? They understand they need to enlarge their, their, the place of the tent. They need to stretch for the curtains. They cannot spare not. Lent tie cords and strength the stakes. When they understand that, let me see, this is what is going to happen in your life. Please read with me Isaiah 54, 3. This is the result of understanding what the Lord wants for you. For two shall break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall in, in, inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. This is going to happen. What is going to happen? You're going to be blessed in the right. You're going to be blessed in the, in the left. I'm saying I'm risking more. You're going to be blessed everywhere. When you are in the mentality of God in your life. You know what happened with this event? I enter in this faith. Okay, I know it's the word of Lord. I don't want, I need one million dollars to do this event. I need people. I don't have anyone. Lord, what am I going to do with this? I sign a contract with my wife, risking our house. I put everything waiting for what is behind the curtain. And you know what the Lord did in five months? Joshua was there. 
John was there in the event. We have 44.700 thousand people together. We see one million dollars provide. My team of my supernatural school where I start three years ago, I told them, you're going to be the revivalists of Europe. No one believed me in that time. They did already in three years the biggest event in the bigger event ever in the history of Europe. How we did that? We did that because we enlarge our time. We have a purpose with redeeming the world. We have alliance. Let me say, if you have the same heart, God can use you in every kind of sphere. If you have the alliance with God and you obey to Isaiah 54 too, and you walk in that mentality, you will see the blessing. You know what happened that day? <laughs> you don't imagine. All, all the people send me message. Even the Pope sent me message. Imagine a kid in Portugal. No one knows. The Pope sent a message to him. You are doing the most important thing in the world. Even the big leaders of Portugal, they come to attend to my event. When you have, when you trust in the words, Lord, for your generation, you, you need to be prepared because he's going to bring the kings to you. He's going to put you in higher places. And now we are, to finish, we are preparing something. The Lord told us to bring the next generation. So we, after when we do something, we can believe something more, no? And we now, we are trying to rent the biggest stadium of Spain. 75,000 people. I don't know if you are excited, but I'm crying already. I'm crying <laughs> because I know what is coming. It's easy to speak, but when you are going through, I know what is coming. Many challenges. I know he's coming many wind. I know he's coming many situations. But at the same time, I know that is the will of God. To touch thousands and thousands of people. And to inspire children, young people, people who love God. We can take the stadiums. And the stadiums are created for the kingdom. Not for only for sports. Because the religion of our days is sports also. Many people spend all their money and things in sports. So we need to put Jesus there also. I don't have any problem with sports because I'm a sports manager. Eh? I love it, sports. But if there is the, pe the place where we take the attention of them, that is the place where we go. We go to the higher places to take the attention for the kingdom. Let me say one thing to finish. I want to pray for some of you because I really feel... When I was there in the worship, I feel an anointing in this place. And I feel God wants to activate some people here. To go to further, to have the, this heart of the people of Israel. They decide to redeem this world. They want to have an alliance with God to do something to redeem places, areas, areas of society. I don't know, some, maybe some of you have the ideas to do events or activities. I don't know what you have in your heart, but one thing I know, if you are excited, it's from God. If redeem people, it's from God. If bring justice, it's from God. If we bring uh, the presence of God, it's from God. If it's, that is you, I want you to, you to stand. And I want to pray for you. And if you, if you have an alliance with God, because Abraham took an alliance, and the alliance means sacrifice. If you are disposed to, to give your life for that, even that will kill your reputation. You don't know what is behind the curtains. You know, many times when I was doing the event, I want to see behind the curtains and I don't see 
you will not see maybe behind the curtains. But if you have the courage, you want to enter there by the blood of Jesus. You know what is going to happen. You're going to please the Lord. If you are prepared to do that sacrifice, come to the front. Come to the altar. Because that's what, what he did. Abraham, go to the altar. David, go to the altar. Hev, go to the altar. The altar is not a, a good place. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of blood. You, it's difficult, I don't know. You will see blood. It's difficult. If any of you have children in the, in the back, if you want to go get your children, you can bring them in. This is a time to, to take care of that. We're going to continue ministering here. But if you would slip out, if you would need to go, you can do that. But, but uh, if you have children in the ministry area, there's so many children back there. If you want to go, this would be the time to go get them and you can bring them back. And we want to minister to families as well. So this, just feel free to do that right now. The sacrifice is not an easy place. It's a place where you will see all your strength. It's a place where you don't live more for you. You live to please him. But who have alliance with God? And God have alliance because of their sacrifice. They will see the kingdom in their areas, in their spheres. Bring yourself to the altar. Decide today to be the sacrifice of God. Forget your reputation. You are a son of God. He take care of the sins. Three days before of the event, I don't have nothing secure. And I, at that moment, the Holy Spirit visit me and speak this with me. I don't will let you in shame. I'm going to exalt your name. And after two days, it provide all the money. He make the biggest breakthrough ever in Europe. We make people again dreaming with the kingdom in Europe. Where is dry God see what? See water. He explained that to the disciples. The field is prepared. So I want you to take you to take you to the altar come to the altar start to worship God you know many times we sing his only songs but let me say one thing truly sacrifice is giving our lives for his purpose that's real love it's not your, your capacity but it's your heart meanwhile we worship We're going to pray for you also. I don't know if you have some ushers. I need some help, please. But I really feel the Holy Spirit want to. To enter in alliance. And to renew alliances. church have the purpose to change this city God will raise people here crazy people
people who have the courage to do things the others don't have yet. If you are that person, <laughs> prepare because in the next weeks, God is start to give you projects for this city.